Welcome to our lecture online. So here we are continuing with the astrophysics videos and the next topic we're going to talk about is the minor axis of an ellipse. We just covered the major axis of the ellipse. So notice the distance from the center of the ellipse to the point farthest away that is called the semi-major axis and the distance from the center of the ellipse to the point that's closest to that is called the the what we call the minor axis or in this case the semi-minor axis of the ellipse so how do we calculate the value of that again to remind ourselves that the object about which the planet for example let's assume that this is a small planet with small mass m which is going around the sun with the big mass m and of course big m is much much bigger than small m and notice that the sun would then be located at one of the foci of the ellipse now the distance from the foci to the center of the ellipse is AE. Hmm, how do we know that? Well, we'll get that in just a moment. This here is what we call the minimum R distance, and from here to there is the maximum R distance. Notice that the R, the distance from the sun to where the planet is at any point in its orbit, we call that the vector R. And the magnitude of R can be defined as A, which is the magnitude of the semi-major axis, times 1 minus E squared divided by 1 plus E times the cosine of theta. Now we saw that in some previous videos. Remember that E is the eccentricity, which can take on values from 0 to 1. If the eccentricity is 0, then we have a perfect circle. If the eccentricity is 1, then the object moves back and forth on a line. There's no distance in the vertical direction. There would B would essentially be 0 at the time. Notice that 2A is the major axis, which is the sum of R min plus R max. And A, when we take R min divided, plus R max divided by 2, we get half that distance A, which is the semi-major axis. But how do we f define B? That's the, the key here. So first of all, what we can say is that uh, A, which is this distance right here, minus R min is this remaining distance A times E. How do we know that? Well, from a previous video, we recognize that R min is equal to A times 1 minus E, and R max was A times 1 plus E. So that's how we define the radius r min and r max depending upon the value of the eccentricity of the orbit and then if we solve this by multiplying a times 1 and a times e we get a minus a e equals r min or solving for a e we have a e equals a minus r min so we can see ge geometrically that that is actually correct now we're going to take a look over here notice what happens when the planet hits this point right there the distance the point here that defines the distance B, which is the semi-minor axis. Well, at that point, the distance from the sun to the planet, if we assume the planet is over here, that distance R is now equal to A. Well, how can we be sure that that's the case? Well, notice if E is equal to 1, then this distance and this distance would be the same. With other words, the sun would be right here at the edge, and this distance A would be the same as this distance A, and then this point M would be right here, and the planet would just be going back and forth like this, in extremely eccentric orbit, essentially a straight line back and forth, and so that makes sense that if E is equal to 1, that this distance A here would be the same as this distance here. Now, what if E is 0? If E is 0, then this distance shrinks to 0, and then you can see that A would be equal to B, which makes sense because when E is equal to 0, the orbit would be a complete circle, and so that also makes sense. So we can see that when we find the extended limits, E becomes equal to 1, and E becomes equal to 0, this distance does all hold up correctly in that setting. So we seem to be comfortable by saying that A E is equal to A minus R min. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use Pythagorean Theorem. We're going to say that b squared plus ae squared must equal a squared. And so we're going to use this equation then to find the value for b. So in this case we have b squared is equal to a squared minus a squared e squared. And so we can say that b squared is equal to a squared times 1 minus e squared or finally, b is equal to a times 1 minus e squared to the 1 half power. 
So then we can say that, whoop, that the ratio of b over a is also equal to the square root of 1 minus e squared. So there's how we can define b. We can define b like this, or we can define b like that. So that's how we define the semi-minor axis. Now what we could do is we could take a look at our equation right here and realize that we could solve this equation for a. We can say that a is therefore equal to b divided by the square root of 1 minus e squared. And then if we plug that into our original equation, we have r as a function of theta is equal to a, but instead of a, we're going to write the equivalent of a in terms of b, b divided by the square root of 1 minus e squared times, we have 1 minus e squared in the numerator, like that, the multiplication sign, and 1 plus e cosine theta in the denominator. And then realize that there is a lot of similarity here, so we can finally rewrite that r as a function of theta in terms of the semi-minor axis can be written as b times the square root of 1 minus e squared divided by 1 plus e times the cosine of theta. So here we have the same equation for r, the distance from the sun to the planet, as the planet goes around an elliptical orbit in terms of the semi-minor axis and the ellipticity and the position relative to the angle, the angle that's relative, of course, to the uh, semi-major axis. And that is how we define the semi-minor axis in this equation, just like we did the semi-major axis in the same equation. And that is how it's done.